I'm Eric Sentry. Uh, so we do uh, we do error logging. Um, I f yeah, I s actually I've seen a lot of you guys from last year. Uh, it's good to see a lot of uh, familiar faces. Um, speaking of Heroku, we actually Sentry got its start on Heroku's add-on community, and uh, we've obviously grown a lot since then. I'm gonna give you guys a quick walkthrough, um, and hopefully not spend. Too much time, uh, as I'm sure you guys want to get to the talks. So, Sentry, super simple to get started. Uh, basically, you install uh, Composer Require, you install the library, a couple configuration steps, and you're good. And uh, so what do we do? So what we do is, uh, just like when you deploy something into production, um, and something, someone hits an error, and someone writes in, and it's just this awful experience of people being like, something broke, you're like, what, what broke? And they're like, I have no idea, it's your job. It's not my job to tell you that. Um, so, in this case, there's this very, very simple piece of code that we have here that is obviously throwing an exception. Um, so how do, we, how do you find out about those exceptions in production? Because when that happens, you just you want to fix it as quickly as possible. You want to get to resolution. So I have uh, this lovely localhost thing running. Um, we actually do this thing called user feedback that you can enable so that instead of just showing an internal server error, as much as I'm sure you spend a lot of design time making sure that's gorgeous, um, you can pop this. And uh, what will happen is inside of Sentry, we'll capture that. So um, you can, a lot of times when people talk about this, the first thing they say is like, oh, can I just use logs for this? And the logging experience looks kind of, you're probably going to get something like this. This probably looks familiar to a lot of people. But what Sentry does by default is we, we bring you this, which is going to be a lot more familiar. When things are breaking in production, you want to sort of get to that line of source code, get that sort of context so you can look at it at a glance and be like, oh, this is my code, or this is you know, Bob or Susan's code. Uh, we need to try and fire them. But before that, we need to get them to fix the problem. Um, and like, the nice part is, too, is we not only just tell you the line of code, we sort of give you that nice, like, oh, there's a couple lines beforehand, a little bit after. And you can also see right there, we also give you the username and password. Uh, because a lot of the times when things break, you're looking for, like, what exactly happened here? How did the user get to this state? And so we're going to pass you the value of the variables at time of error, right? Like give you that snapshot of state at time of breakage. Um, the nice part, too, is of course you can see right there, we don't give you password. By default, you can enable this if you want, but um, we will filter out things that are, look sensitive to us, things that look like social uh, security, uh, API keys, passwords, etc. Um, on top of that, we give you a lot of context. Things like what release it ha started happening in, uh, what environment it happened in. Um, you can, I can say like, oh, this is not, OK, Wi-Fi? Yes. Um, why, uh, this is not really happening in production. It's only local. And also things like breadcrumbs. Like what were the things that were happening in the application? What SQL requests were being made leading up to that error? Um, but the core of it really is just like coming to this page, seeing your code, broken or someone else's code and being able to jump up here, assign it to somebody, and move on with your life. Um, so yeah, and on top of that, um, as you deploy new code, right, that's usually when things tend to break. And so we'll give you this nice UI of like, this is a release going out. And so this is a release that went out a couple days ago. And you can see in this release, we, uh, we resolved some errors. We, there's a couple new things that popped up in this release. And of course, a nice, like, simple summary of what went out. This is really about just um, having it so that when things break, it's obvious. It's not pouring through logs. It's not like having horrible like day long back and forth with customers to, be, to ask them what exactly went wrong. Um, it's sort of this idea that we can get you the information as quickly as possible uh, in a way that you're used to seeing it in development, uh, except for your production errors. Uh, and then my favorite part of Sentry, uh, one of the big uh, reasons I'm really excited about it is we've been open source nine years. Uh, 13,000 GitHub stars, BSD license. Um, as you guys all know, with being here for Laravel, uh, some of the best developer tools are open source. We have hundreds of contributors, um, and it, it's a big part of who we are. So um, if you guys have questions, we're at the booth. Uh, you can always email me. My email is eric at sentry.io. Um, or if you honestly uh, are curious, or you wish we did something better, or you wish we have a new feature, uh, file an issue. Uh, we will get to it uh, eventually. It's hard open source sometimes. <laughs> uh, but uh, my advice there is go talk with David Kramer. He is actually the founder CEO. He's at the booth uh, today. So that's it. Short and sweet. Uh, good meeting you guys. All right. Thanks to.